Hey 302, I'm Jackie Ferris. This week we're at the Delaware Children's Museum where we're learning through play. It's a great place to bring your kids. Get ready to get all Mensa. The 302 is seeping into your gray matter. Hey 302, we are here at the Delaware Children's Museum and whenever you have a good time you tend to remember things so learning through play is kind of the jam here at the museum. I'm joined now to talk about everything that you can do and see and partake in at the museum. We're joined by Joe Valenti who is the marketing manager for the Delaware Children's Museum. Joe, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. So the basic concept here is everything is learning through play. STEM is the key focus here, right? That's correct. Actually, uh, STEAM. It's uh, science, Steam, okay. technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. We also have our, our art studio as well uh, that focuses on the arts. Um, but yes, yeah, so we do focus on learning through play. Um, and developing creative minds through playful learning. Mm -hmm. So when someone comes in, walk me through the museum or, and, and tell me a little bit about what we can see. Sure, uh, we actually have eight permanent exhibits here at the museum. Um, we have our um, eConnect, which is our uh, ecological um, environmental exhibit, which features our tree pavilion. That's probably uh, one of our more popular areas. It's a 350 year old sycamore tree that has been hollowed out and preserved that was um, uh, given to us by a local arborist. Uh, it comes from a local forest when it had fallen down and children are able to kind of climb through it, explore. It really is unique to the museum. They're able to learn about um, the environment and ecology and really makes for a great, uh, great picture opportunity. Um, we also have our uh, Power of Me exhibit which learns all about physiology and the human body. Um, some of our sports exhibits that tends to um, skew a little bit older. We have our training wheels exhibit which uh, focuses on uh, movement and uh, vehicles, things like that. Um, we have our, our stratosphere, our, our stratosphere climber which kids can climb through and explore. Um, our art studio, our bank on it exhibit which focuses on uh, financial literacy. And then we have our rotating, uh, rotating gallery which we have a, a rotating different group of exhibits throughout the course of the year. Now when you walk through the museum you see uh, placards with Chase and everything and they sponsor the um, the exhibit that teaches the financial responsibility and all of that. Talk to me a little bit about, I understand there's like a lemonade stand. What exactly uh, do you guys, what kind of tools do you employ to teach kids about, you know, finances and things like that? Uh, well, the finance uh, exhibit is actually, it's, it's interesting because it's always kind of changing. Um, up until recently, we had uh, things like a, a, um, a mnemonic tube, where they would learn as far as a banking tube, things like that. And we had um, check writing stations, things of that nature. Kind of realized that as kids get older and as we progress as a society, uh, some of those things aren't are going to be kind of outdated. You, you know, have to get kids... some Apple Pay in there. Ex exactly, exactly. Yeah, as kids grow up, they're not even going to be writing checks anymore, things like that. So we've kind of transitioned that in some newer technology as we're able to. We also have. Um, really kind of focused in that area on our, uh, our lemonade stand, as you mentioned. It's a sort of a cafe where kids can sort of, you know, serve their parents at the, at the tables, bring out different food and beverage items, and then ring that up at cash registers. Kind of their first foray into finances and the concept of paying for what you're, you're taking. Mm -hmm. sort of. And it kind of reinforces a lot of the lessons that they will learn as, as they grow in life. You mentioned the tree pavilion, um, and it talks a lot about environment um, and, and the responsibility that we have as uh, environmental citizens. Talk to me about those lessons. Absolutely, yeah. Again, um, we are, for the most part, a first museum experience. So this is the first museum that most children will visit and, and really go to for themselves. So we try to impart the lessons that we want all of our you know, adult um, uh, neighbors to, to, to embody, but sort of on a children's level. So it's their first experience into environmental stewardship. Uh, they realize what the uh, the environment is and what you know the nature is with a, with a large tree like that. They're able to see what it was like when it was living, and now that it's fallen down and it's been preserved, how they can interact with nature and with the environment. And everything here is hands-on. Little kids are touching everything, and that's the whole point, I guess. So they can really they can touch it, they can feel it, they can use it, they can play with it, and they remember and they learn at the same time. Talk to me about this concept of play through learn. Uh, well, again, it, it's it's all how they're able to um, first engage with 
the world. So they, what they, what children can see and experience and touch and actually have hands-on experience with, they're able to learn learn more about that. And obviously, if they're able to play and have a great time, they'll be they'll be more apt to take it seriously and learn from it and be able to take it with them. Mm -hmm. Now, I noticed that whenever you come around, there's like in the very very middle, there's like a climbing kind of thing. So it's not just um, something for the mind, but it's, there's also stuff for the body as well. Absolutely, yeah. Um, the, that, the, what you're referencing is our stratosphere. Uh, it's a large climbing structure that kids can climb through all the way up to the top. Actually, parents can get in there and climb around as well. Um, it does get a little bit tight, but uh, they can definitely get in there and, and interact with their children and climb around. It kind of teaches them, like you said, um, interacting with their bodies and, and, and physical activity as well as, uh, as, well as, as interacting with one another. They have to sort of pass each other and um, go around one another and kind of work together to climb to the top of the structure. Kind of like teamwork. Absolutely, yeah. So you talk about the steam, we talk about the physical aspect. Are there any other lessons that can be learned whenever you, you come here? Um, I mean, I think that the biggest lesson is just to have fun with everything that you do and to be able to use a fun activity in order to learn from it. I mean, we really focus on, like you had mentioned, hands-on activities that kids can have fun with and enjoy and really kind of always changing. So every time they come here, there'll be some different activities. We have weekend classes and different weekend activities. We have a monthly um, indoor and outdoor summer activity, um, starting with our, our summer kickoff. We have our dog days of summer where um, we have uh, uh, pets and service animals here. Okay. So just kind of interacting with the world, both uh, inside and out. Excellent, we're gonna talk a little bit more about one of the exhibits coming up and those classes coming straight up. We'll be right back. I'm Pat, and you're watching The 302. Welcome back. We're talking to Joe Valenti about all the things that you can see and do and partake in at the Delaware Children's Museum. Now, Joe, I know there's a lot going on this summer, but at the end of the summer, really big deal, the end of the summer bash. What's that all about? Uh, yes, that's part of, uh, we have almost monthly um, indoor and in the summertime outdoor activities uh, and special events here at the museum. Um, on Friday, August 16th, we sort of uh, finish up summer and end summer with a bang at the museum. It's our end of summer bash. We have um, some indoor uh, activities, educational classes, things like that. And we also have some stuff outside, out front. We have some uh, water activities, um, some of our other outdoor fun stuff that we do just to kind of say goodbye to summer, one last fun time before it's back to school. Um, as, as with all Fridays, that's going to be on a Friday evening from 5 to 8. And every Friday from 5 to 8, our admission is only $5. $5 Fridays, love it. It's very affordable for parents to come um, on Fridays. Yeah, we try to um, have at least, like you said, once a week we have this uh, discounted, uh, discounted admission, so it's easy for families to bring multiple children. When it's Friday, especially in the summertime, after, after work, after school, after camp, things like that, they can come over here and um, you know just sort of unwind after the week, get ready for the weekend with the museum, and uh, kind of enjoy some of the special activities we have. Now, I know whenever you have kids and you're taking them somewhere, for a couple of hours. You have to plan in food for your day. You have to plan in all of these things. Are there, is there food on site for people to, to buy? And we, uh, we actually only sell sort of light snacks, snacks, snacks and drinks, things like that. We found that that's probably, that's what most of our guests are looking for to purchase here. Um, a lot of our guests will, especially around lunchtime on the weekends, things like that, will bring in an outside lunch. And we have uh, plenty of seating, plenty of tables and chairs for them to sit at and have lunch kind of in the middle of their experience here. So it's a nice opportunity to bring in a picnic and just kind of enjoy the day, you know, touching everything and learning through play and all of that. So what else do we need to, to bring whenever we come for a visit here? Um, really just to uh, um, just bring yourselves, bring your, uh, your, your, your indoor voices. We try and uh, have everybody have fun but still be somewhat controlled. Um, like I said, bring whatever food they're looking to bring. Um, general admission is $9. Uh, that's, that's every day. We are closed on Mondays, but Tuesday through Sunday, um, that's, it's $9. Um, again, every Friday from 5 to 8 is only $5 per person. And then we do have a great membership program where it's uh, $99 for your entire family. Okay. Now, your entire family, like you've got seven kids and that covers all of them? Yes, it's uh, two, up to two adults and then all the children in your family for just $99 for the full year. That's great, that's great. Now, I know you were saying we need to bring a picnic lunch if we're going to be out here for a little while, but uh, on one occasion, you're going to want to bring your lightsaber. Talk to me about the Star Wars. That's right, yes. Uh, that's actually um, 
Labor Day weekend on Saturday from 12 to 3, uh, we have our Star Wars Science. It's one of our most popular days of the year. Uh, we have a lot of um, Star Wars and, and, and space-based uh, educational programming in the museum. We also have some uh, officially licensed costume characters here that will be here taking pictures with fans, interacting with fans. Um, yeah, a lot of the different characters from the movies will be here. Uh, it's always a great time. A lot of our, our younger uh, guests will dress up. They can say come in lightsabers, dress in their, their Jedi attire. Uh, it's always a fun time. So, and it's also an opportunity to introduce younger children to, you know, space and to the science behind space. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, just kind of like with everything else with the museum, we try to um, incorporate the, the science and technology um, learning in, in different classes, but on a smaller, you know, on a children's level. So we are sort of their first foray into that kind of thing, especially something as, as deep as space and space travel. So we do some of our um, space activities, our um, aviation adventures, where we, we focus on some of our um, astronauts and space shuttles, things like that. But again, on a much smaller scale that, they're, that uh, younger children are able to comprehend and, you know, experience. Do you find that the kids are, are able to uh, make the, the connection between Star Wars and look, these are real life Star Wars uh, kinds of folks. Yeah, and I could be that person when I grow up. Definitely, yeah. I mean, that's what we try to focus on is that, you know, this isn't, this obviously is uh, science fiction and is the movies, but it isn't just that, that there are, like you said, real life uh, Star Wars uh, characters, real life astronauts, things like that. Just to kind of, again, be that first sort of foray into what these kids can learn that they can be as they get older and they get into the world. Now, you mentioned the memberships, and I know that you have classes during the summer, and, you know, we're coming up on the end of the summer, so do you have classes going into the fall? Um, actually, every weekend in our STEM programming room, we have a rotating, um, that's, and that's through the fall and through the, through the okay. spring, okay. Uh, we have rotating classes of different, um, uh, again, the, the engineering, um, some of our uh, space adventure, the um, tri science, our uh, physiology, so it's again just more um, science-based activities, but sort of on that children's level. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you said that you uh, change your exhibits from time to time. Do you have anything that you're able to share with us about, you know, maybe what's coming up in the future? Um, we will be, once the fall hits, we're going to be uh, going back to our cardboard box maze. Um, it's actually, it's very similar to the, uh, the corn mazes that you'll see outside and some of the fall activities, um, but it's in our large gallery. It's made entirely of uh, recycled and upcycled cardboard boxes kind of teaching uh, children about uh, the value of recycling, of not, you know, not being wasteful, reusing when possible, and then also it's just a fun activity they can kind of explore through. The maze changes each year a little bit, so it's you know, fun to see them kind of try and find their way through and explore the maze. That sounds like a lot of fun. So if somebody wants some more information on the membership, the classes, just about all the stuff that you do here for kids and their families, where do they go? Uh, they should definitely check out the website. It's DelawareChildrensMuseum.org. Um, or they can follow us on Facebook, Delaware Children's Museum, or on Instagram, DE Children's Museum. Excellent. Joe, thank you so much for your time. Thank we certainly you. appreciate it. And thank you very much for all that you're doing for the community. Thank you. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Sue Frost with Organize My Life, Redesign My World, and you're watching The 302. Remember, organizing is the one change that changes everything. Welcome back. We're at the Delaware Children's Museum. I'm joined now by Becca Verdon. Now, Becca, there's so much to see and so much to do here. Starting with this tree, what's the deal? So this is our tree pavilion. It is a 350-year-old sycamore tree um, from the Alapocas Woods, which is um, right nearby us. Um, it took a long time for um, Dave McLeod to hollow it out, um, and they were looking for somewhere to give it to, and we were glad to take it, um, bringing nature inside. Um, it's something that you don't get to see a lot, um, being inside of a 350-year-old tree. Um, and we found that a lot of people take their family pictures here, being the family tree, um, and really taking a safe risk. It's a little dark, a little scary for some kids. Um, so they get to explore a little bit of nature inside in a safe way. Now this is part of, it says here, the eConnect, connecting kids with uh, exhibits that talk about the environment. Talk to me about what is behind, when you go through this tunnel, what is behind the pavilion here? Yeah, so um, eConnect really connects the three aspects of um, Delaware's ecosystem. So we have the, the woodlands and the forests, um, 
the water. So we have a huge water table all about the oceans, the rivers, the creeks that are all throughout Delaware, um, and then the wetlands, which are all throughout as well. So really trying to connect kids and make making them excited and interested in that. Now, I was just back there a couple of minutes ago. There were a bunch of kids and they were pumping water and they, there were fish and everything. So the kids really have a chance to get their hands in the water and just really touch things and learn. Talk to me about that aspect of yeah, it. Yeah, so we want everything to be very hands-on and child-directed. Um, so everything, you can get a little messy, a little wet, um, but not not too, too dirty. Um, and really allowing kids to um, follow what they're interested in, and they might be a little more interested in dressing up like a pirate, or... Sure, there's a pirate, pirate ship back there. Pirate area. Yeah. Um, maybe they want to build um, a dam up, or just splash in the water. It's a little bit of everything. Yeah, you also have, it looks like a garden back there, without dirt. I'm sure the parents are very thrilled about that. Yeah, so again, trying to incorporate different aspects of what's in Delaware. So agriculture is obviously very important um, to our state. So a little bit of gardening in there. And then they can also cook, of course, because have to cook your meal. Um, and then we also have um, a saltwater aquarium um, with all sorts of fish. Of course, there's the very popular Finding Nemo and Finding Dory fish. Um, all through in there. So much to do, but there's also an art studio. Yes, so um, our art studio is again very hands-on, child-directed, um, and process-driven, so we don't have crafts, we have art activities, so everything um, is very open-ended, nothing, you have to do this step, this step, this step, so you have the materials and kind of build or create what you would like to. Um, and everything that we have in there, we like for parents to be able to figuratively take home with them. So taking the ideas home with them so that... Um, Hi there, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> taking the ideas home with them. So nothing too crazy expensive, but um, like, so we have packaging peanuts and sponges and you can build with them. So all stuff that's very inexpensive and something you could do on a rainy day. Yeah, you could do it at home, but right. the thing about doing it here is that, I guess, it gives parents ideas. Yeah, absolutely. Trying to get them um, a little more engaged and excited and connected to um, STEAM, so science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Um, so we think that the art aspect really allows for the creativity of STEM to come alive, because a lot of times it can seem very stiff and rigid, but trying to break that down for parents and let them know you can do this at home, you can have fun with it, um, and it can be really interesting. And having the studio here, you have like a little memento. Of your yeah, trip. If absolutely. If you don't want to have all the mess at your house, right. you can have it here. Take it yes. home and put it on your refrigerator. Exactly. Glad to have the mess here. So talk to me a little bit about the, the outreach that the Delaware Children's sure. Museum does. Um, so one of our um, very exciting um, outreach programs that we have is our um, Earth Balloon. So it's a 19-foot tall globe. Wow. Um, and it's um, taken by satellite pictures of the Earth, so it's exactly what the Earth looks like. Um, we bring it around to schools, community organizations, um, and we do programs all the way from preschool all the way up to 12th grade. Okay. I talk about all sorts of earth science, social studies, geography, um, wow. and we can fit about 30 kids, um, so a classroom in the Earth Balloon at, at any given time. So it's a really cool program that, um, an experience that you wouldn't normally get to experience. So how do people get involved if they want to know more about uh, the outreach and, and maybe the, the opportunities that uh, could maybe come to their school or to sure. their clubs or whatever? Sure. Um, so um, probably through our um, field trip and outreach supervisor, she schedules all the field trips um, and the um, outreach, like the earth balloons. Um, and so as long as we're available to go, we can bring it out. Excellent. Well, thank you yeah. so much for joining us, Becca. I'm sure once people see this, they see the tree and all the, the good stuff behind there, you're going to be flooded with folks. And that's a good thing, because this is certainly a great asset to the community. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be right back.
that'll do it for this episode of the 302. If you want more information on the Delaware Children's Museum, all you have to do is check out the DelawareChildrensMuseum.org. We leave you now with a shot of a tropical fish here. Have a great day and we'll see you next time on the 302.